guys. Well, welcome back to the Tammy Hudson Pillar podcast. Well, we are in week three of our series called Paradigm Shift. And as we talked about a few weeks ago, there need to be some paradigm shifts in our life. If one thing that this pandemic and this COVID-19 has done, it's revealed a lot about us ourselves personally. Maybe our character, maybe our um, elements of fear, a family. So I believe that there needs to be some shifts in our life. As you know, I mentioned to you over the last few weeks, a paradigm shift by definition is a fundamental change or approach or underlining assumptions. Now, guys, let's think about this. Most of us have presuppositions. We have convictions. We have thoughts. We have bents that are just part of who we are. It's how we see life. It's the lens with which we see life through. That's a paradigm. A paradigm shift is actually taking that and looking at it in a new way. It's shifting, sometimes even to the opposite extreme. And I think it's so paramount, so important that we look at all of the elements of our life right now and we begin to ask ourselves, are there some shifts that we need to make? As you know, last week we talked about anger in our life. And there's this sense of, of anger, both in society, in our world, in relationships. And we looked at that biblically. How can we shift with the spirit of anger that's over? us. Today, I want to actually talk to you about fear. And if you remember when I started this series, I talked to you about this vision that God gave me and these three arrows that I believe the enemy has attacked humanity with. And that first arrow was the arrow of fear. And then I mentioned the second, I believe, was dissension. And the third was confusion. But if you're like me, you have sensed fear like you maybe have never sensed it in your lifetime. I believe that COVID-19, I believe that all the media frenzy and all the mandates on society has caused so much fear in all of us. You know, months ago when this hit, this pandemic, this COVID-19 hit, we were all so afraid that we were going to catch it. And I remember even thinking numerous times, I think I have COVID-19. You see, it starts with a thought. Fear always starts with a thought. It's emotion, but it starts in your mindset. And we're going to break this down in a few minutes, so stay with me. I believe this might be one of the most important podcasts you have ever listened to in your life, so stay with me. Whether you're watching us on our YouTube channel or you're listening to me on my podcast station, I believe there's some truths here that can help you. So think about it. Fear is an emotion, but it starts in our mind. So for me, that the fear of what if I catch COVID-19? Oh my gosh, I could literally die because people were dying. So all of a sudden I started rehearsing, I could die, I could die, I could die. And anytime someone would cough, I'd get around someone, they didn't have a mask on. Because it set root in my mind, the emotion kicked in and it became an obsession with me. I didn't want to go out. We all were in lockdown. We, we wouldn't even let parents come over or children come over or friends because there was this obsession with COVID-19. I could die. Then literally at night, I don't know about you, but I would lay down at night and my heart would race a little bit and I would take deep breaths and I'd ask myself, can I breathe deeply? Am I okay? Did I catch it? Because you don't know. Were you somewhere where you got the germ from someone? So all of a sudden, this mindset of fear, I was living in this sensation of fear. I can't breathe. It's hard to breathe. I could die. And because of media and the coverage, it became, again, as I said, an obsession over all of us, the data and the science. Could I get it and could I die? And that became a mindset. Now listen, here's what fear does. Fear becomes a mindset that becomes a reality. So we all lived in this atmo atmospheric pressure and thought of fear. I believe that, and we're going to get to the scripture in a minute, the Bible says that God has not given us a spirit of fear. There is a spirit of fear that is permeating society and humanity today, not just locally, not just nationally, but I mean globally. You can see it in other countries as well. There is this spirit that is hovering over us of fear. COVID has brought a sense of fear and anxiety. Listen to me. I have never in all of my years in ministry or coaching dealt with so many people that are having anxiety and panic attacks anxiety and panic attacks. Literally, the panic attacks are so real. The anxiety is so real that they feel that they're having a heart attack. 
Even someone I dearly love close to me just recently had to go to the hospital with a panic attack. It was so real, he thought he was having a heart attack. And I believe it's because there is this sensation, there is this atmospheric pressure and presence of a demonic spirit of fear. So what do we do with our fear? I'm going to give you some steps and write these down. Go back and listen to this again if you're not a place that you can write these down. But use these tools. These are biblical coaching tools that can help you deal with fear. Number one, know that fear is real, but it can be overcome. Know that fear is real, real, but it can be overcome. Don't just say, oh, it's not true. It's not real. It's not real. Don't try to suppress it or push it out of your mind. It is a real spirit. Fear is real. I deal with fear all the time. I cannot say, oh, it's not real. It is real. But I also know that it can be overcome. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. So when I get a fear attack... I literally stop and say, right now, my heart is racing. I feel it. I sense it. It's a spirit. I begin to do battle with it. I recognize it, but I know beyond the fact that it has me crippled and captive, I can captivate my fear. So number one, don't try to um, say that it's not real. Admit it's there. Admit you're dealing with fear. But first of all, know that you can overcome it. Number two, face your fear head on. Face your fear head on. Listen to me. Look at it in the face. Your fear has a name. It could be a fear of the darkness. It could be a fear of COVID. It could be a fear of failure, of death, of relationship. There is a spirit of fear that's trying to attack you. First of all, you have to recognize what it is. Now, if any of you have followed me for long, you know that I've told you before that I struggle often with this fear at nighttime. I don't like to stay alone when my husband's out of town. I go stay with a girlfriend or family member. I don't like that. And I had to go back and trace this. Where did this come from? It was something that happened from my childhood. Why am I afraid of the dark? It's a real fear. I can't say it doesn't exist. But what I've done is I recognize it and I've started to do work on that fear. I've gone back to trace where does that fear come from? And then I try to strategize and biblically deal scripturally with where that fear is. So you have to, first of all, understand, speak to the fear. So I look at that fear when when the sun starts to set and it starts to get dark and I hear a creak in my house or I know that I'm alone. I say, Satan, you are a liar. You have no authority over me. There's nothing in this house other than me. And I start to process through. I look at the fear straight in the face. I call it out and I tell it it will not have control over me. Number three, this leads into what I do in my process. Listen, weigh the evidence. Listen to me, weigh the evidence. You've heard fear defined this way, false evidence that appears real. False evidence that appears real. Where's the false evidence? So the false evidence when I'm at home late at night by myself is I hear a noise. The refrigerator goes on. You know, something falls off the wall and breaks and I think somebody's in the house. It's false evidence. It appears real because I hear something or the emotion takes me down memory lane. I again look at that fear in the face and I say, this is false evidence. So I have to weigh the evidence. Do I think someone's really in my house? No. Do I think I'm in danger? No. Do you see how I'm weighing the evidence right here? And once I can walk myself through the process of saying, there is no one in my house, there's no one after me, I am safe, then I can literally see it's false evidence. It appears real because the emotion is engaged, but it is not real. Number four, get some feedback from a trusted friend. So often what I will do, I might go to the Word of God, but often I'll call a friend and I'll say, hey, walk me through this. Let's just talk right now. I got to help me understand this. I'm safe. I'm fine. Now, as we mentioned a few minutes ago, maybe your fear manifests itself in rejection. Maybe it manifests itself in a relationship. Possibly you have been in a relationship where you have been betrayed or you've been hurt or you've been lied to. So you're suspicious of any relationships. I just spoke with someone the other day and she began, she's begun to date again. She was in two failed marriages and she told me, I think I self-sabotage. I don't think I believe that I can actually have another healthy relationship. The fear of having two bad relationships are setting her up for having a good relationship. 
See, that's false evidence that appears real. I don't know where your fear lies. You have to figure that trigger. You have to figure out where that basis is for you. But once you do, then you have to have someone hold you accountable. And that's so important that you get a trusted friend that can walk you down the path of getting back on a road to victory. And then this one is so good. Listen, I love this one, even though we all hate it. Get the good out of it. Get the good out of it. How has your fear made you stronger? How has your fear made you stronger? Listen, out of the scariest moments, we can find the greatest skills that we didn't know we had. I was just on a walk with my son this morning. He's, uh, his family's out of town, and he came up to stay with my husband and I for the week just to have some time with his parents. And he and I went for a walk this morning as we're walking to Starbucks. He began to tell me about some things going on in his life. And he's a very successful businessman, and an opportunity came during COVID-19 that expedited his company to a whole new level. And he said, Mom, this is the scariest time of my life. I'm so afraid to fail. I know I'm good at what I do, but right now, this is bigger than I ever dreamed. And we began to talk about what he's learned through this fear, because honestly, he said, I almost want to backpedal out and get back into my comfort zone. But listen to me, this fear has stretched me beyond what I ever dreamed of doing. And I want to go back into my comfort zone, but the fear that's stretching me into my future is really taking me places I never dreamed of. You know, as a fitness trainer, I, I turned around and I said, well, but it's, it's really what I learned in all of my training in fitness. You have to break down a muscle when you work out. You have to break that muscle down to stretch it to a new level. And that's literally what happens to a lot of us. When you go through a time of fear, don't look at it as a bad thing. Sometimes it's the very thing you need to take you to a new level. It's the very thing you need. Get the good out of the moment. So I can literally say, I'm going to be afraid of the dark my whole life. Or I can begin to say night after night, I'm going to get victory over this. You will no longer rob me of a good night's sleep, enemy, because I am afraid to go to sleep by myself. Do you see how you can take the very things that the enemy meant for evil and you can turn them to good in your own life? And then next, I love this one, ask God to fill you with his spirit. Ask God. Now listen, we're talking about fear and we're talking about it. Honestly, you guys, I just want to be as honest through these podcasts. Fear is something that every one of us have dealt with through COVID-19 at whatever level you're at. It still hits us today. As we mentioned last week, there's now a mutation and we have now alpha, now we're into delta and all these mutations of this virus. Is this our new normal? Or every time you get a runny nose and, a, and, and you feel fatigued, are you going to feel now you've got another part of the, the, the virus? Is this fear going to captivate you and control you for the rest of your life? Or are you going to get the good out of how you've been stretched through the last 18 months of fear in your life? Ask God to fill you with his Holy Spirit. In Acts 15, 52, the Bible says, and the disciples were continually filled with joy and the Holy Spirit. And you know what's interesting? If you read this passage, at this point, they are being ridiculed. They are being beaten. They are being thrown out of the city. It is a very stressful time. Jesus has died. They're trying to stay, stand strong for their convictions, and they're going from city to city and to people to people, and they're introducing the claims of Christ and the fullness of the Holy Spirit, and literally they are being beaten and tormented. And then it ends with this verse, the very last verse, and yet the disciples were continually filled with joy and with the Holy Spirit. Listen, you cannot do this on your own, my friend. I don't care how capable and strong you are. You have to stop. You have to meditate. You have to be filled with the Holy Spirit. There has to be course correction. As I'm going through these new days of our new normal, I literally on my prayer walk say, you've heard me say it a hundred times, Lord, give me insight, wisdom, and revelation. I do not want to be a woman of fear. I want to use wisdom I want to know where to go and not to go. I, I want to know if I should wear a mask, not wear a mask. Do I get vaccine? Don't I get vaccined? Walk me th through these unprecedented times. Walk me through these dark waters of the soul. Walk me through how to act and think. Listen, listen, listen. I'm telling you, we have to learn how to maneuver through these times. Be filled with Holy Spirit. 
And then the last one I think is so important, meditate and memorize scripture. Now, these are biblical podcasts. As you know, I'm a woman of faith. I, I couldn't get through this time without God. And there are a variety of different messages out there on the faith-based platforms. I just want to take you to the Word of God as we conclude today. I want to show you what the Word of God says, and I want you to begin to do all the things I just said. I think these are great tools. Walk through them, listen to them, but ultimately know and memorize the Word of God. That is where your foundation lies. So let me give you a couple of scriptures as we close today. Number one, fear not, for I am with you. Fear not, God says, for I am with you. Listen, be not dismayed, which means surprised or taken off guard, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. That's the part I was telling you about in one of these points, that you literally will come out stronger through this if you allow God to strengthen you. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand, Isaiah 41.10. Meditate on these verses. You are not alone. God is not going to let you die or fail. He will walk with you through these deep waters. And then Hebrews 13, verses 5. For he has said, I will not leave you nor forsake you. He won't leave you. He's not going to forsake you. We can confidently say, the Lord is my helper. Guys, meditate, memorize, Mark these in your Bible, make cards, put them in your car. This isn't over. The fear is still coming from the top down. Literally, there is right now, as I'm doing this podcast, there's an eruption going on in Cuba right now. There's an eruption happening in Mexico right now. I listen to Fox News. I listen to news media. It's so easy for me to get fearful. And yet he tells us in Hebrews in the New Testament, I will not leave you or forsake you. I can confidently say, Tammy, the Lord is my helper. I will not fear. What can man do to me? Memorize these. You may not always have a word of God that you can go to. Who knows where our country's going in the days ahead? Hide thy word in your heart that you would not sin against God. Let me give you two more. In 2 Timothy 1.17, the Bible says, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of love, of power and of what? Of a sound mind, an accurate mind, a mind of logic, not craziness. God didn't give you the spirit of fear. So if you're running rampant with fear, stop, look the fear in the face, call it out and know that spirit did not come from God. And then Psalm 23 that we all know, and so many of us have quoted over the last several months, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. And listen, we've all walked through it because every one of us at one point or another over the last 18 months have asked ourselves, I wonder if I have COVID-19. I wonder if I could die. Every one of us, even though we walk through the shadow of the valley of death, I will fear no evil. Why? For you are with me, God. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Are you, are you feeling his comfort right now? I often get a picture of that little sheep that's run astray and you just see that shepherd with that hook and he just pulls them back in. And, and God says to me, Tammy, Tammy, when I'm laying at night, my heart is racing. You are near and dear to my heart. Do not walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Don't fear what's going on right now. Speak it out. Walk in confidence. Know that I am with you. And he says, for they comfort me. I know I said two, but I want to end with one more. I absolutely love this one in John 14. Peace I leave with you. Hey, did you hear that? This is Jesus in John 14 saying to his disciples, and that's all of us if you're a follower of Jesus, you're one of his disciples. Peace I leave with you. Peace I give to you. Not as the world gives. So if you're trying to get peace from the world, you will never feel the peace of God. Only God can give peace that surpasseth all comprehension, that will guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. Peace I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. Hey guys, we all deal with fear, but I believe we need a paradigm shift. I believe that you need to be more than a conqueror in Christ Jesus. I believe you need to take every thought captive by renewing your mind. Do not let your children sense fear. Do not bring fear into your home. Do not bring it over the threshold of the door of your home. Do not let your children, do not let your spouse, do not let your loved ones, don't post on social media 
Don't enter into the fear frenzy. Be a person of faith. Be a person of confidence. Be an overcomer. For greater is he that is in you. Peace. I live with you. I leave with you. <laughs> so guys, what a great time. I love our podcast together. And if you want more information, you can check me out at TammyHotsonPillar.com. I love my website. I have a new website up. You can find out a lot about Story Club and what I do to coach you to tell your story. You can follow me, please do, on my social platforms on Facebook or on Instagram. But love to have you guys um, give me some feedback. I hope these podcasts are helpful. We're going to do one more in this series next week, so stay tuned. We're going to talk about the paradigm shift of conviction. Where do your convictions lie? So have a great day. I look forward to hearing from you. God bless.